one track mind. Addicts fueling HIV's fury. I've got two brothers that you know that has tested positive for it. I knew it was coming because it was too open. It's much easier for someone to lie to you than to tell you the truth. The infected often unaware of who's really sharing their bed. I had only been seeing one certain gentleman, um, so I knew that that was who had infected me. And he tried to tell me for the longest time that it couldn't have been him. There was no way it could have been him. And then I found out later that he had a wife that had died of AIDS. Kim Vaughn takes 20 medications a day to keep her condition under wraps. Just one specifically for HIV. The rest treat related symptoms. My muscles and joints are really sore all the time. I get infections really easy. She's been HIV positive since 2000, according to the AIDS Resource Group. She's one of more than 300 people in Vanderburgh County living with the disease. Kim's diagnosis discovered while getting help for alcoholism, a vice she admits lowered her inhibitions. It was tough on her kids and tough to tell others. Kim says it took almost four years to start a new relationship and share her status. There's probably more people that are hiding the fact that they're positive because they don't want people thinking bad about them. They don't want people looking down on them. That's partly what's triggering an epidemic declared outbreak in Scott County. The Indiana Department of Public Health reports 150 new cases since mid-December. Typically, there are just five in an entire year. I know there's going to be a lot more um, because there's still, you know, like 130, I think, contacts that they're trying to find that are contacts of people that have HIV. So those people probably have been, you know, had access to the HIV virus and, and are more probable to be positive. So I know the numbers are going to go up and I know it's going to spread outside of our county too. It may have spread to Perry County, one of five listed in February as being of concern due to an infected person having blood to blood contact with someone there. It was mainly the jails. They were actually from Scott County, but they were in the jails in other counties. At the heart of the epidemic, injection drug use. Specifically, Opana, a powerful opioid painkiller. Experts feel its abuse started to worsen in 2013. That's when the Indiana legislature passed new requirements for doctors who write such prescriptions. More of it now sold on the streets. And as drugs travel the interstate, some believe it's only a matter of time before new HIV cases start showing up in Vanderburg County. Our community's health is at stake. Lisa Nelson and her staff at the AIDS Resource Group in Evansville are assisting health care workers in Scott County. ARG tests for HIV connects patients with treatment and other resources. They also administer what's called safer injection kits, which include tools to sterilize needles. Some find that controversial. This is not a morality issue, it's a health issue. So if we can provide an environment where people could get safe and get safe needles, I think we could see some numbers come crashing down. Indiana has a statewide ban on clean needle exchanges, but Governor Mike Pence lifted it temporarily in Scott County. Everybody gets a sharps container so they can put their old needles in it and bring them back in a week. The program in its second month, the Scott County Health Department says it's provided more than 10,000 clean needles and received almost as many that are dirty. Their involvement documented to avoid criminal charges. Public health nurse Brittany Combs says most admit to injecting Opana. It's been shocking, absolutely shocking. I mean, they use it until the needle literally breaks off in their arm. Um, 300 times, I heard someone say. Um, some people will say, I use it for two weeks. Um, they take a file and they'll file it to make it sharper so they can use it again, and it's just sad. Combs drives one of the clean needle exchange programs by SUV right to the epicenter of the outbreak, Austin, Indiana, about 35 miles north of Louisville. Injection drug use is rampant here. We found them in a the ditch along here and everywhere. 
got to watch when you mow. They're pretty open about it. Yeah. I mean, they don't care. I've seen kids that has them at school. Addiction, a tired trade of this town of 4,000. Even who's infected is common knowledge, like David Reed's brothers, who he says tested positive last month. Reed says they're still shooting up. He looks at it that, you know, I've got it, you know, I'm dying, you know. He looks at it, you know, that there's no help for him no more because, you know, just because they test positive, you know, they think nobody cares for him. It's not a death sentence like it used to be. When I first found out, that's the first thing I thought, oh, my God, I'm not going to be here to raise my kids. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be here to help my mom. I'm not going to be here to, you know, do all see my grandchildren. Reams of patients are resilient, like Tim Baker of Chandler, HIV positive for 34 years. It doesn't come easy. What's going on today? Evansville nurse okay, practitioner here, Denny uh, Myers treats about 250 toes. patients like Scott who okay. are HIV positive. Very hyper reflexic. He's one of two board certified not, HIV uh, specialists uh, within 100 uh, miles of the tri-state. According to the American Academy of HIV Medicine, there are just 15 medical professionals who specialize in HIV in all of Indiana. There is just something about this disease that scares everybody and um, even in the medical profession, there's still some stigma. I've had people I've had to send out of town for certain surgical procedures uh, because uh, certain medical people or whatever didn't want to deal with them or didn't feel that they felt secure in dealing with, with them. One possible deterrent, Meyer says as many as 90% of HIV patients quit treatment after the first month. It's time consuming for both parties and the medications have strict guidelines, let alone expensive. Rayataz is over $1,000. Myers asks patients with ineffective medications to bring them in so those without insurance could see if they'll have better luck. Now some good is coming from this. More people are aware and getting tested. Myers says that includes patients in their 50s, 60s and 70s. In Scott County, the health department's testing an average 50 people a day. What has the workload been like for you since this all started? Absolutely insane. It's been nuts. Um, and we, I mean, we're working 60, 70 hours a week. Um, this is a very small health department. I'm the only public health nurse for the whole county. Combs says this epidemic has given them access to people they didn't know need help and connecting them with a gamut of resources, even some now taking steps to get into rehab. It's not about just throwing needles at them. That's not gonna help them, um, and they get that. Back in Evansville, education remains ever important watching from afar while knowing naivete puts everyone at risk. So I can educate one uh, person who actually fears this disease into better understanding of the processes involved and maybe entice them to go get tested, then we've been successful today. When stigma ends, epidemics end. Until then, people are going to be afraid to get tested. People are going to be afraid to take medications because what if someone sees me? What if someone sees my pill bottles? They don't want to admit. They don't want other people to know they have HIV because of the stigma and because of discrimination. So until, in my view, until we end the stigma, we will always have HIV. So we have to stop the stigma. It's a picture taken when it's far too late, and too often, it's nothing like the original. Child exploitation is absolutely a growing problem. Indiana State Police received triple the number of tips on child exploitation last year compared to five years ago, and that's just from internet service providers. More than 1,200 documented complaints referred to Indiana's Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, majority for child pornography. EPD Detective Brian Brown investigating 10 to 15 cases at any given time. The number of social media sites that are, that are available for young people to, to use, uh, it just 
increases opportunities for, for predators to set up their profiles and look for vulnerable teens and young people on those different locations. Most social media sites have age restrictions, but there's really nothing stopping a news reporter or a 46-year-old man from lying about who they are. Teen dating site MyLOL says users must be between 13 and 19 years old, but preference settings allow you to match with someone up to 25. A 27-year-old Zachary Coleman of Evansville allegedly used it too. Court documents show he had sex with a 12-year-old from Owensboro he met on My LOL. About 300 tri-state teens currently have profiles on the site, possibly exposing them to pedophiles. They don't have to go hang out by the playground or they don't have to work in an ice cream truck or whatever. They sit online and they know here's where all the kids are congregating on Snapchat or Vine or Facebook or whatever. So they um, put themselves in that situation where they're around them. Social media site Scout listed in court as to where 31-year-old Gwangu Ai, a soldier stationed at Fort Campbell, met a 13-year-old from Rockport and later allegedly had sex. Court records show in both cases, the social media conversations moved to private messages. And that's something Brown says parents must avoid. The child's privacy comes second. The parents have got to be the first line of defense when it comes to this area. A lot of what I'm doing is reactive. The crime has already occurred. The child's already been exposed to pornography that they didn't want or they've been solicited. And they may not even understand what the solicitation is because they're not experienced or whatever the case may be. And now they've been exposed to something that the parents now have to sit down and try to explain. Detective Brown recommends parents require their children to explain how each downloaded app works and never allow them alone with devices in their bedroom. Hosting a sleepover? Instruct guests to keep all phones on the kitchen table. Now, in addition to My LOL and Scout, Brown says apps like Kick Messenger, Whisper, Omegly, and Snapchat have all turned up in criminal investigations. He strongly disagrees with letting children chat with strangers around the world, especially if photos are involved. It is definitely becoming a bigger problem because you have these anonymous chat apps. That creates a problem. You have so much self-produced pornography of children that are 17 and under that are falling into the wrong hands. Once you send an image to another person, uh, you've lost control of that forever. Six EVSC students tried in juvenile court for their role in what they thought was an anonymous Twitter account that spread nude photos of classmates. The tweets reached almost 3,000 followers in a matter of days. They're charged with indecent display by youth, an Indiana law that took effect last year designed to address sexting amongst minors. It only applies to those under 18 and within four years of one another and doesn't require jail time. Otherwise, they'd be charged with distribution of child pornography, a felony.